Hello. Uh, we're going to be talking today about line graphs. Now, there are, of course, a million different kinds of graphs in the world, uh, and we're not going to be able to cover every single one of them in great detail. Uh, but I do think that in this class, I think it's, it's wise to sort of step aside from general data visualization topics and, and also uh, from the technical aspect of things to just talk about what makes a particular kind of graph work well, and what are some of the kinds of things that we need to think about when we are working on these kinds of very common graphs. And I think line graphs are a great place to start. Uh, they're very, 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 very common. Uh, you've probably seen a million line graphs before. They're very effective, which is one reason why they're common. They just work really well. Uh, and also there's a lot of flexibility and choices to make. You can do a line graph very poorly. Uh, so let's talk about some of the things that we need to think about when we are making line graphs. So first of all, what are line graphs good for? What kinds of stories? Well, generally, line graphs are good for one kind of thing. Things where you have one x variable in, and that gives you one y value out. Uh, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between x values and y values. The x values always go forward. They don't. Nothing doubles back, right? You know, you don't have uh, a, an x-axis of 2009, and it goes 2009 to 2010, and then back to 2009 again. Like, that wouldn't make any sense for a line graph. That's not what line graphs are. Are all about. Uh, line graphs, you have a single y point for every x point. Now, maybe you have multiple lines on the same graph, but every single line has that same relationship. One x in, one y out. Uh, in addition, the x-axis should be changing in generally consistent discrete jumps. Uh, so it should be one, two, three on the x-axis, or January, February, March, or 2019, 2020, 2021. Things like that. Time is often the x-axis on a line graph, although certainly not always. Uh, it doesn't work quite so well if you have very big discrete uh, or big, big jumps in your x-axis between one point and another. It just looks kind of weird to go from 1 to 2 to 100 with no points in between. So that's the kind of thing we're looking for. Anything where we have a single one-to-one -one relationship between our x-axis points and our y-axis points, and also our x-axis is discrete and evenly spaced. Those make for the best line graphs. Uh, so things that this is really good at telling, stories this is really good at telling, things about change over time, uh, when that change occurred. Uh, and you can also compare different line graphs on the same set of axes very easily without getting too cluttered uh, to show how different groups are changing over time. So for example, uh, maybe you have uh, your firm and your competitor's firm, and then over time you see how your firm uh, is going up and up and up, and the other the competitor's firm is going down and down and down. That's a very clear story. So with that in mind, with the kinds of stories that we can tell with line graphs, how can we do them well? So the first thing I want to say is don't be afraid to be really, really simple with a line graph, right? It's not a waste of space to have a single line graph that is just showing you a single number over time, especially if that is telling a very strong story. Let me show you an example of a line graph that I made. And yes, I am showing off. Uh, so this is a line graph that I made uh, about national restaurant foot traffic uh, over time from May 1st to July 26th. The question, of course, being, are people going back to restaurants uh, during the pandemic? Uh, you know, what are we going to see? How would we expect this to affect cases in the future? And so that's the question. Are people going to restaurants? Are they walking into restaurants? Uh, now, this is very zoomed out. You can't see this graph very well from where I'm showing it to you, right? You can barely tell. Uh, what's going to graph. You can't read most of the text, but still you know the story of what's going on very well, right? As soon as you know that this is restaurant foot traffic, you don't need to read any of the other texts to have a very clear idea of what the story is. There's an upward slope, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it levels out. That's the story. Uh, the fact that we can get across so much information without really getting close to it or having good detail in the picture uh, or being able to read the text from where you're sitting that's a very powerful graph. So if you have a number that you need to focus on that can tell a story for you, don't be afraid to just put it by itself. You don't need to clutter it up with a whole bunch of data points and annotations and everything. A really good line graph can speak for itself. Something else I want to point out here, notice the, the background uh, here, behind the green line here. Uh, so what we have are a bunch of horizontal lines uh, behind the, the line th th that we're actually tracking here. There's not vertical lines. This is very common in line graphs, and in fact, a lot of line graph themes that you'll see uh, will use this particular procedure. And the reason for this is, on the x-axis, we're already sort of marking time, or whatever the x-axis is, with the ticks at the bottom. And because it's evenly spaced, it's very easy for us to tell sort of where we are 
in time, right? Without needing to have a, a, a marker in the middle there or even be able to read the x-axis, if you know this goes from May 1st to July 26th, if you look in the middle of the graph, you know you're somewhere in the middle of June, right? Uh, you don't need a marker on the horizontal line to be able to figure that out. But the vertical lines can be very handy because it makes it a lot easier to tell just sort of how big certain differences are. Uh, so for example, you know, you can see that there's a very straight line on the upswing there uh, with the national foot tra the restaurant foot traffic. Uh, and that's made a lot easier. It's easier to see that it's a very consistent increase because those horizontal lines are there. Uh, the other thing I will point out is that we have labeled the line itself. I'll get a little bit more into that later because you can't actually see this label, but that's going to be a very handy thing as well. So that's thing number one. Don't be afraid of a single line graph. Make sure that that line graph tells a good story. Uh, try horizontal backing. Uh, if you're in deep, if you're in ggplot, you can you can uh, affect which uh, which lines you have with the theme function. You can do uh, panel grid axis uh, uh, or panel panel grid axis x off uh, equals element blank. That'll work for you. Uh, beyond that, what kinds of things might we think about with line graphs? So often you will have multiple lines on the same graph, uh, and also maybe some other decorations we want to think about. So what do we want to think about there? So if we want to have multiple lines on the same graph, there's a number of different ways that we can distinguish one line from another. Uh, lines lend themselves to a number of different kinds of distinctions. So one is color, an obvious one is color. Again, as always, if you're using color, make sure you're good for colorblind people, uh, that you're using distinct colors that maybe tell a story for you, uh, which ones may be good, which ones might be bad, it can help you out. And there's also line type, uh, how many dashes or, or, or points, or is it just solid? can help out. Uh, you want to get, you know, you, you can only go so far with that because it's very hard to tell apart one type of dash from another, but you can certainly separate a solid line from a dashed line. That's very easy to do. Uh, to some extent, you can also do size. You can notice that some lines are very thick, some lines are very thin. Uh, if you really want people to distinguish this, you need to go really extreme on the differences. Minor differences in size on lines are kind of hard to see, especially if there's a number of different lines going on. So you can see here, one of these lines is at least twice as thick as the other one, and that makes it easy to distinguish those two. So there's different ways we can distinguish different kinds of lines. Another good one is highlighting. Often when you're doing multiple lines on a graph, it's because you're interested in just a couple of them, or maybe even just one, but you need some sort of comparison. Uh, so for that, you can use highlighting. So for example, in this graph here, uh, we're tracking life expectancy in North American countries versus all American countries. Uh, and so we highlighted Canada, United States, and Mexico, and all the other American countries that are in the background, right? Because all we're trying to do is compare Canada, United States, and Mexico against the rest. We don't need to focus on the rest. We don't even really need to tell apart the rest. Like I can't necessarily be confident in following along one of these gray lines from start to end and knowing that I'm following the same one, but it doesn't really matter, right? Because I'm focusing on these ones in the foreground. They're, they're highlighted. Everything else has sort of grayed out and gone to the back. In, in ggplot, you can do this with the gg highlight uh, package. Other good things to note here. Uh, I'm labeling the lines. This is very good practice on a line graph. You very, very rarely need a legend on a line graph. And in fact, you probably don't want one. Legends are tedious. I don't like them, uh, and on, especially on line graphs, because you have to take the information that's over there. Okay, okay, the United States is blue. Okay, I follow that over the line. Okay, there's the blue line. That's the United States. It's a lot of work mentally. Or I can just put the word United States on the line itself. Uh, you, and so that I, I'm pretty, even, even if you're doing just a single line and you don't necessarily need to label things, you could, you could just put it in the title. It's still a good idea to put the, the label right on there. Like we have the restaurants on the, on the, on the CNN graph. Uh, so that's a good idea as well. You can do that in, in ggplot using either the direct labels package, or you can use a geom text to, uh, or geom label or gg repel, uh, package, uh, to, uh, to label the last point or the first point of the line itself. That's a good thing as well. Other things to think about here um, is uh, labeling points. You can label points in line graphs. That's very common. Uh, so for example, here I've labeled the first and last points on the graphs. So you can sort of see the values that it's going from and to. This is nice because it means you don't need to go back to uh, the uh, the axes to try to sort of follow a line along, right? You don't need to do that. You can just see what the point is right there. You can, of course, label points in the middle as well. Again, this is uh, with geom text and just labeling the first and last points. Uh, it's, a, it's a good idea, especially if you, need, if you need people to know those points, you should put the numbers on there, right? Take the information that people need to know, put it on the graph. Don't make them work hard for it. Don't make them follow along to the line to the left. If they don't need to know it, don't put it on there, right? No point labeling something that, that you don't want people to know. The other thing I'll point out is that 
adding horizontal or vertical markers uh, can be very handy, especially if there's a particular uh, borderline that you're interested in. So for example, in this graph, we've had a horizontal line so that you can see when lines cross that horizontal line. Uh, so I wanna say, hey, when do we rise above this particular threshold? Well, it's when we pass across this horizontal line. I can distinguish it from the other lines on the graph by making it dashed and making everything else solid. So you can see that I'm not plotting data there. That's a D marker that I've put on by myself. Uh, in this case, it also goes beyond the end of either the uh, any other line, so that also sets it apart so you can tell that it's not data there, it's the marker that I'm interested in. Uh, you can also use vertical lines. Uh, this is very handy for putting a point in time, and you'll actually use this one a whole lot uh, if you are looking, hey, hey, this is when we had the company picnic. Company picnic improved morale, here's morale, here's the picnic, oh, look, morale went up or something like that. I guess maybe that's what a picnic does. Um, so you can put in dates, uh, especially if, you're, if you have time on the x-axis is very handy there. So that's sort of a basic rundown of the kinds of things you want to think about when you're doing the line graphs. Don't be afraid of a single line graph that tells a good story. Uh, but if you are putting multiple lines on the same graph, uh, you can distinguish them with line type. You can distinguish them with size to some extent. You can distinguish them with color. Uh, so some of those are things that you can do. You can label the lines, which is I always recommend doing. I pretty much always will label the line itself of a line graph. The only exception is if there's a bunch, way too many lines, if it's way too busy, you can't see the labels, in which case you probably need to re re redo that graph anyway. It's probably not a very good graph. You can label the points. If it's important to know what the actual values of the points are, put them on there to let people know. Uh, and then finally, you can demarcate either thresholds on the y-axis with a horizontal line, which in, in ggplot2 is uh, the geom uh, h-line geometry, uh, or vertical lines to demarcate before and after, especially in two, when, when your x-axis is time, which is often the case. Uh, that can be the geom v-line geometry. All right, that's it. Thank you.